We are now joined by the CEOs of the hour, maybe the day, maybe the year before we're done here. They're the CEOs of Discovery, David Zasloff, as well as CEO of AT&T. He is John Stanky. So thank you both very much for joining us. I want to start with changes of directions. And I'll start with you, David, and then I'll turn to you, John. David, this is something of a 180-degree change for you. You prided yourself in being involved in non-scripted, relatively inexpensive production programming. Warner is exactly the opposite of that, very high-end, expensive, scripted. What caused you to have a change of heart? Well, first, in many ways, we're really in the same business. We're both global IP companies. And uh, we've been on a mission to aggregate more compelling stories and characters and IP in the U.S., which is why we did the Scripps deal with HG and Food and why we got into business with Oprah and Chip and Joe. And so, you know, e even though our content may be less expensive, we still aggregate to t about 20 to 25 percent of viewership, depending on any given night in the U.S. And outside the U.S., we're the leader in sports in Europe with Eurosport, and we have free-to-air channels in a number of markets where we're like NBC or CBS, as well as being in the, uh, in the cable nonfiction business. But uh, John and I are really aligned in strategically trying to get to scale above the globe, to have to be a meaningful, scaled competitor. And in order to do that, you need great content that people love. And uh, one of the things that we looked at, we launched Discovery Plus, you know, very strong, great product, um, great reviews and app, and app ratings. Um, and people are using the product for three hours a day. And, uh, but we looked at what John has, King Kong, Godzilla, uh, the incredible brand of, of HBO, Sex in the City, Game of Thrones, Superman, Batman. And we, we started to think about it as a combustible combination. You got some incredible IP that people will uh, pay for before they'll pay for dinner. And then we have a bigger library than Netflix with content that people love, whether it's Oprah or Chip and Joe or Food Network or HG or the BBC content, Planet Earth. And so I think this is just a, a way that kind of assures that Warner, uh, probably the top of the pyramid in, in, in quality IP and quality talent that's loved all around the world, together with the content that we have, that where we are already the largest global media company, we have more global IP than anyone else. And when we come together, uh, we think it just, it makes us a, uh, a real formidable global IP business to compete with the best in the business. So, so, John, David says that you're at least in the same sort of business, even if they're different ends of the business. But you've also had something of a change of heart here. There was a major strategic decision made to really move into the media business as a telephone company. And now you're really reversing that. You're going to go back to your roots, the telephone company. Let me understand, looking back at it now, was the strategy wrong or did something change in between? Because let's be frank, you're leaving some money on the table. There is some value being destroyed. Well, I, I probably dispute whether or not there's value being destroyed. I'd actually say that we've managed to increase the value of the assets we bought by maybe about 30%. If you look at the cash we've taken out of the business, the assets we sold, and the effective value of this transaction, and, and some reasonable assumptions that once it trades as to how it's uh, it's going to trade at a multiple. John, I just want to make and sure I understand that. I think you bought it at $85 billion. This is $43 billion. Are you saying you got that difference out in well, cash? Well, we're getting $43 billion in cash, and we're getting 71% of the equity of the new, the new business. Uh, so <laughs> there's two parts to that. And uh, the, the point of view that I think I'd have on this is the team's done a remarkable job of pivoting the asset to be effective in the direct-to-consumer world. And that's really the value that I think David and the rest of the industry see it right now. Now, what changed uh, since we went into this was originally a point of view that this would help our connectivity business. And, and indeed, it has. It's lowered churn. It's helped us on customer acquisition on things like selling more broadband connections. And it's raised customer satisfaction on those products. But in 2016, I don't think we had a clear picture of what the global opportunity was going to be in direct-to-consumer and whether or not that was going to be essential to playing in that space. And it's become clear that, as David just described, it's, in fact, going to be global. And the market opportunity for that, the value creation opportunity, is significant. It's so much more significant than the value 
that we get back into our connectivity business domestically in the United States to drive down churn and improve our customer acquisition that I can't in good conscience not allow these assets to develop to their full potential and to give it the kind of exposure in the market that it needs to get the kind of multiple on it that we just talked about that will increase value that the share owners of AT&T at 71% will carry forward. This is the right move at this time to actually make that happen given the changes in the environment. So David, you know, the opportunity, David, really is um, that uh, by, by putting our assets together in media, right. um, we think that we're not just better together, but that, that we're probably the best media company in the world. We have the most IP, we have the most in-language in content, we have the greatest diversity of content. And for John, you know, the, the, the vision here is that, you know, two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, we're the number one media company in the world, and AT&T is the number one telecom communications company in the world. And we take along 70% of the, our shareholders are right. John shareholders, and we're creating value for them if this, you know, if, if, we, can, if we can do everything we think we can. So, David, I, I would be disappointed if you didn't have really high expectations. I think everybody's rooting for you. At the same time, even with this really large conglomeration you're putting together here, you're still well behind Netflix and well behind Disney when it comes to subscribers in the OTT space. How are you going to make that up? And very specifically, how much are you going to have to invest in content? Uh, if you take this combined entity, will you be spending as much more or less than the, than the two individual on content going forward? Well, we're going to be spending a lot more than Netflix. Right now, it's between the two of us, we're spending $20 billion a year on content, and we expect to spend more than that. Um, together, right now, we have almost 100 million subscribers, and neither one of us have really deployed aggressively outside the U.S., and we're differentiated in a meaningful way in the U.S. now with the extraordinary IP that, that John and his team have built together with, with Discovery. It's a very differentiated and compelling offering. However we do it, whether we put it all together at, at, at one price or whether we do it as a bundle the way Disney has. And around the world, we have between uh, 10 and 12 channels in every country. And we've been out outside the U.S. for over 15 years. So as part of this offering, we also have a big library of in-language content. And we got teams on the ground everywhere in the world to drive the international. So we think we're very well positioned to, to drive this. And we have the kind of IP and the stories that are coming out of Warner Brothers are stories that are loved everywhere in the world. Uh, John, let me turn to your business, as it will be after this deal is concluded, and talk about specifically 5G. Uh, AT&T has fallen behind T-Mobile in that area. What kind of investments do you need to make to catch up and pass to be number one specifically in the 5G space? Well, uh, T-Mobile clearly had an opportunity given the merger with Sprint where they picked up some spectrum that was suitable for 5G deployment. And that allowed them to move a little bit quicker in that area and actually cover a little broader cross-section of the United States. Uh, however, our 5G network is very present in ma major metropolitan areas all over the United States, which is good news for us, the bulk of where our customers are. And, and I think as you've seen by our momentum in the last several quarters, customers are voting with their feet and they like the offers that we have in the market. They like our overall service proposition. And they like the way our network is performing. One of the, it is the fastest 4G LTE network, plus a great 5G network on top of it. And that gives a very consistent and effective service experience. And we're only getting better. We uh, purchased quite a bit of spectrum in the last uh, government spectrum auction. Some of that will go online late this year. And as it starts to go online, it will begin to close that gap with T-Mobile. So we feel comfortable that we're moving in the right direction. We'll, we'll keep that gap manageable right now from a performance and service perspective. And as the year moves on through next year and with this increased investment and focus, uh, we'll be sitting in a really good position relative to our competitors on 5G. And that's in fact one of the reasons why we are trying to get the right. balance sheet in a little better shape here. David, let me wrap up with you. Uh, as, as you know so well, you've been around this business a long time. The success of many mergers comes from really uh, really putting together the assets. Do you plan to really put together the assets of Warner Brothers, for example, with what you're doing at Discovery, or will you run them separately, sort of the way Bob Iger did with Pixar? We're going to run them together, one culture, and the culture is going to be a creative culture. Uh, how do we invest in the best talent, the greatest stories, 
the, the best writers, the best producers. Uh, that's what John has been doing at Warner Brothers TV, at HBO, you know, uh, at the uh, at the motion picture business. You know, when 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 I turn HBO on. I'll watch content that my first instinct on any other platform, I might not, I might not watch it. I might not watch an Alabama, an Alabama uh, football documentary. But if it's on HBO, you know the storytelling is another level. And that's the quality of, 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 the, Warner, of the Warner business, our conviction for great storytelling, great characters at Discovery. And I think there's room for a company that really embraces the creative community, for, with support and fun and plenty of funding and a platform that we can take it all around the world. So I, I, I think with these assets together, we're going to have a hell of a run. John, you put some really attractive assets up in play, as it were. Is there room for another company to come in and make a, an offer to try to break this thing up? Well, look, we, we did this transaction because we wanted to do this transaction. We thought it was a great match. We think the content's incredibly complimentary. We think it's got a you know, really strong process and path to approval in the regulatory environments. We think the management teams will gel well together. And for all those reasons, I think we've constructed a transaction that's really sound and solid, including voting agreements with some of the large minority shareholders in Discovery that you know, basically has about 44, 45 percent of the vote uh, already set up for the transaction. So we feel we've got a very strong uh, contract. We have a very strong approach. We want this transaction to close. We want that kind of uh, uh, knowledge and, and certainty for our employees. And uh, we're going to keep moving down that path. I'm pretty confident we're going to get that done.